I've been doing a lot of testing lately and uh, if you haven't been following along you can see those experiments on Patreon, my Patreon site. They're free to watch, they're available at any time. You don't have to become a member or anything like that. So uh, if you want to see what I've been doing you can check it out there. In particular the experiments have been around buffeting, the, the amount of buffeting I'm getting from my bike, from the screen I've got on it currently. And I started to think, you know, I've been doing a lot of testing with the uh, putting things on top of the screen to try and minimize the buffeting. And I found that no matter what I did on top of the screen, it didn't seem to make much difference. Even putting a taller screen on, I still got a lot of buffeting. And I began to wonder, I know I am getting some buffeting from below, coming up from underneath the screen, because I can feel it on my beard. And I'm and I started to wonder, well, if I'm making all these changes to the top of the screen and they're not making much difference, maybe most of the issue is coming from below the screen. So with that in mind, I made and 3D printed these fork lowers, which I'm going to fit onto the bike today and do a test to see if the wind coming from below the screen is actually the problem. And maybe this could solve most of the issues I'm having. Let's go out to the bike and check it out. Now I've been looking for a, a simple way to attach these fork wind deflectors. And I did discover two M6 bolt holes underneath the lower triple clamp here. I'm guessing they're the mounting points for the fork shields that are on the Chief Bobber. And I thought that's a good spot. I can probably use those to uh, attach these fork wind deflectors to or, or use them as a mounting point. And I come up with this little, this little U-shaped bracket here, which just goes around the bottom or the top of the fork leg, just underneath the triple clamp. And there's a little dimple underneath this lower triple clamp uh, which is like a locating dimple, I, I assume. So I'm just going to attach that there, bolt that up from underneath, there's two bolt holes, and then screw this fork deflector to the, um, to the mount and see how that goes. Now I've made this a three-piece system where I've got the actual wind deflector itself, and then there's this little piece here which I've printed so that it just presses in to the back of the deflector and it's going to press up against the fork leg and then this is the third piece which goes over that will lock onto the fork leg there's a couple of screws that will go through here into this mount and then there are the two screw holes where it'll uh, bolt up underneath onto the uh, lower triple clamp. Now you may be thinking, well, what happens when the fork compresses? Is it going to contact this piece here? And no, I think it's going to be fine because it's only about 10 millimeters that it takes up. And if you look at the dirt on the fork leg, you can see there's a line where the the uh, fork compresses to about here is its maximum compression. So I've got a little bit of leeway there, a little bit of play. And to be honest, it's only a temporary uh, test, if you like. And if it works, well, then I'll come up with a more permanent solution. But the goal today is just to get these fitted. Uh, actually, I'll do a test ride without them, just with the camera pointing towards me. You can see how the wind's affecting me without them. And then I'll fit them do another test ride and then uh, come back and share my findings. Okay, I just had to go out and buy some M6 bolts. I thought I had some, but I don't. So I got some M6 15s, 19s and 25s, mainly because I didn't measure how deep the hole was for these bolts. It's something I should have done before I left, but I didn't, so uh, I'm not sure how deep it is. If it's not very deep, I got the 15s. Uh, and go a little bit deeper for 19s or 25s. We'll see how we go. Okay, now I'm ready to put the fork deflector on. Just got these two pieces. 
press that into there and I'm just going to use these um, well I designed it just to use these uh, self tappers because uh, that's what I had so but that's going to be fine for what I'm doing here and I did uh, model in some some holes to take the self tappers so I'm not just drilling into plastic I've got a bit of a guide Well, that's the first one on. It's um pretty sturdy. I just don't want it sort of you know contacting the fork leg as it comes up, but I think that's going to be sturdy enough for for what I need. Just for testing, uh, I am worried about this bolt head protruding down. If I hit a massive bump, we may contact the top of the fork leg here, but you know. I don't, I'm not expecting it to. It looks like it comes up to about there, so I reckon we're clear. Um, and I'm just going to take it easy, just for uh, this test. I just want to see if it's going to work. So let's get the other one on. And uh, actually, before I do that, I'm supposed to go for a ride without them on, aren't I? So uh, I'll take it off, go for a ride, then come back and put them on. That's how they look installed on the bike. They don't look too ugly. Okay, wind deflectors are on. Uh, let's see how it goes. If they're going to work, I reckon I'll feel a difference at 40, 60 k's an hour. Let's see how that pans out.
Okay, well I reckon they um, they do help. Uh, it's not certainly not gone. I'm going to watch the video back to back, but the turbulence did feel less with the fork deflectors on, and certainly more tolerable. So. Um, hmm. I think they're worth investigating further. I do have another idea which might uh, which might help the situation as well. But I'll put them in the edit, have a look, I'll put them side by side so you can see the difference at the same speeds and we'll see if we can pick up any, uh, any wind pushing my bed around more or less with one or the other.